tal, haters? Bienvenidos nuevamente aquí al canal, conmigo su host El Diablo. En esta ocasión tenemos aquí el honor de tener una entrevista con el artista, eh, alguien que yo considero una persona eh, genial en la música, una mente maestra, un verdadero talento en el mundo de la música. Él deja, es el creador de varios proyectos y también partícipe de algunos otros eh, proyectos y bandas como son Aka Texas, God Eat God, Malady, God, sorry, <ríe> Slow, Wolven Nest y su proyecto solisto Deja, también de otro proyecto que él tiene que es Inver Luminis, Merda Mundi, entre muchos otros. So, thanks a lot for taking the time to have a little chat with me, Deja. Welcome to El Hater. How are you doing? I'm pretty fine, actually. Uh, it's as you can see, it's you know pretty late here. It's uh, 21, uh, like 9:20 p.m. here, which is you know weird. Like seeing you having you know the sun and all of that behind you, it's super awesome. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm actually doing super fine. Thank you. I hope you're doing well too. I'm very well, thank you. Um, you are officially the godfather of this new segment on the channel. I can. Thank you enough for it. And I'd like to say that last week's Wolven Nest performance at the Rodborn Festival and the utterly pure and honest feeling you put on made me realize that I had to do this segment and to try to spread the word about the amazing bands and projects around the world that I think are not having as much attention as they should. And I can think of a better person for the first episode of conversation from the underworld is the name of the segment. Uh, it translates in conversaciones desde el inframundo in Spanish. And then the amazing Deja. So thank you very much. Well, I thank you very much. It's uh, it's it's always amazing to, you know, with the uh, huge amount of musical outputs that I have that people can actually sometimes just grab into a couple of them and really enjoy and, and appreciate and come back to me. So I thank you very much. Great, man. Um, question number one. Um, from listening to almost everything you have created or are involved in, I can tell you have uh, lots of influences. I like to ask, can you remember what was the one thing that made you realize music was What you wanted to do in life, was it a concert, an album, a video? What was it? I, th I think it was uh, it, it was just a fucking program. I mean, I, I don't know how old you are. You seem younger than me. And uh, like, 30. You're 30. Okay, like, I'm 36. Believe me, those six years, like, they have differences. Like, b back then, you know, like, at the end of the 80s, uh, there were, you know, different computers uh actually pcs were just starting to rise macintosh was there but commodore was there we had some kind of sub commodore general which was called the amiga and these computers let's put it this way my my dad pretty much knew you know a couple of things like he could program some stuff because that guy is he's a genius and so he programmed something that i could just take you know a normal keyboard and typing you know qwerty were doing the actual notes C, D, E, F, G, and all things like that. It was just like beeps, like very simple beeps. But I was just loving on doing that because I was just not creating, of course, but just liking just to do that. And then, of course, it, it was all about the video games back then, you know, floppy disks and just putting them in and realizing that inside that actual floppy disk, all the sources were there, the images, but also the musics. And the musics were in what we call modules. And these modules, you could open them with a couple of programs. And these programs, you had everything, all the sources of the music, how it was done, comments, the actual samples, like everything was there. But it, it was, of course, you know, like a complete other time. So the, the, the sound weren't, you know, as good as it was before, but you also have to imagine it was the same for Sega or NES. Like they were composing with limits. And, I just fell in love with that. Like I was actually not playing the game, just putting the fucking disc and opening the actual modules just to check it out. And so my dad actually got me some kind of program that can actually edit and uses to compose. 
but I was like four years old, you know, like, I mean, I was in 89. And the thing is that I just, I just got to it, like just watching how it was done and like learning slowly because my dad didn't know shit about that. And in the end, I just started to appreciate and I was, you know, taking that sample from that module, taking that sample and trying to create my own shit. And of course, in the beginning, it was bad. It was copy of, you know, samples and sometimes like techniques and melodies, which really sounded like something else. But eventually, I, I slowly started like to, I, I had to create my own stuff because I felt like I was stealing something, even though it was not stealing per se. I was six years old, God damn it. It was, it was completely different. And so in, in the end, man, that, that's, that's just what happened. I just kept on and on. And that's, that's, that's what gave me the, I want to make music because I just heard people making fantastic video games, music with nothing, like pretty much nothing. Everything was holding in a hundred K bytes and it sounded fantastic and beautiful and emotional. And I remember that this plus any kind of emotional music that my parents might have been listening to, whether it would be, you know, from French or Italian variety, or what the world would be, you know, listening back then to the mainstream music, I would just like anything that had emotions in it. You know, like Frank Sinatra, My Way, just to name one song, for example, like this is a very deep and emotional song, beautiful, progressive, that's, I was, you know, slowly listening to this music, and the more that I got into music making, the more these songs meant even more. Because, of course, it was really instruments and all of that. It was a different approach, but I loved it. And trying to get this melody and trying to recreate it, it was, was always amazing exercises. And I loved it. Trying to understand music in order to try to compose something, that was pretty much what I wanted to do. And so, yeah, long story short, doing music on computers. Wow, man, that, that's crazy because I don't think I ever heard that kind of story from almost anybody who I know who plays music, who is doing something about music in, in this time. So that's pretty real. That's pretty rare. And, and it's great. I mean, it's, it's a beginning worth, worth telling. It's, it, yeah, it, it's not your typical, you know, I had a big brother that listened to metal music and uh, he gave me his guitar. It, it's, it's completely different from that. And that's why I appreciated it because I created in a way my open mind, you know, because my, my, my dad never liked metal. I mean, I'm lying. He really enjoys um, like Rammstein or Evanescence, which are bands that I really like, by the way. And uh, he really enjoys them very much. So sometimes when we're talking, he, he told, he's telling me like, I really like, like I was powerful like this, but I tried, you know, to give him like some old school Jimmy board gear and everything. He just doesn't like screaming. He doesn't like double bass. He doesn't like blast beats, but give him something super musical. He's going to love it. Like any kind of uh, instrumental music of Jimmy board gear is going to love them, for example. And I, I always tried, you know, to learn everything by myself. And that's, that's why... I just, I had no one, you know, that were telling me like, okay, this is how you play the guitar. Oh, this is kind of the music you should listen to. I, I had to create this for my own. And I, I, I'm actually happy with everything that I've learned since back then. Yeah. That's the important thing at the end, man. It is definitely. So thank you. Uh, next. Um, your music is very intense and full of feelings that are not easy to deal with, but can be, well, they can produce very beautiful things if used correctly. Do you think creating such beautiful and dark music is worth dealing with that kind of demons? Ha! <sighs> this is one of the best questions I was ever asked in my whole fucking career. Uh, I would say yes and no. I would say yes, because it's, uh, it's the best way to relieve oneself as an artist. So you can just explode your demons because you can't, I, I can't speak well. So making music is my way to speak. But the problem is, uh, last year in January, 2020, I realized that I was addicted 
to making this kind of music. And this is a bad thing because I, I am addicted to putting me into a state where I am just a, a, a horrible, yeah, a, like a horrible vegetable deep into a depression that it exists and it's still there, you know, but I exaggerating it uh, in a bad way because I want to feel this again. And I, I realized that it's not, it's not working well because I started to hurt some people around me and I don't want that. Like, even if you know that they forgave me and all of that because they're the best people in the world, I still felt like that should never happen. If I have something to say, it should be me as it is as I'm sober to the maximum. Like I stopped drinking, I stopped smoking, I don't take drugs no more and I'm sober for almost 10 years now. But the thing is, that is an addiction. So to me, I'm not sober, you know, and... That's why I decided, for example, to create this A Fleur de Peau uh, sequel, because it deals with this thing. It deals with my addiction uh, of making this kind of music. So it tells the whole story from the beginning until what I consider almost the end, which is it's never going to end. But my, my plan is always to get better. I mean, I know that it sounds weird, but... A lot of people are seeing me or believing that I am this kind of very dark person and super emotional and that, you know, the depression is way too big on me, which it is. But I'm like all about black metal and love and happiness and joy and shit. So because it's my goal in life is not to be this kind of super edgy asshole who is just keeping on going down with depression and, and all of that. My goal is to be happy so I can make some people happy. My people, my friends, um, girlfriend, whatever. Like, I want them to be happy. And I know that I can have a part in their happiness, but also with mine. Because if I'm happy, I know that I can create more. And not in order that I can create depressive music when I'm happy. It's just that I will always have something to say because there's something wrong there. And it's always going to be there. So if it's there, whatever that I do, it's still going to come back. So why should I just try to drown myself into these things when it's not attacking me? It's going to attack me at some point, someday, somewhere. I'll just let it win me. Maybe I'll compose something. Maybe not. I don't know. I, I just don't care. I, I know that I want my art or my music to be as, um, as real as possible. And at some point I felt that drowning myself into creating dark and depressing music was just not okay. Like I was cheating, even though I was not because I was just exacerbating actual, you know, mindsets and, and, and thoughts and, and things like that, which will always be there. But the fact that I started to hurt people, my people, that, that was a point of no return, you know. And so that's why, that's the no of, of the question, if you want. But it's, it will always be yes, because it's, it's something that I need, you know. There's, um, there's an album that I released last year, which is called How to Despise Humanity in Seven Lessons and a Half. That album is not depressing at all. But the message that, that I really want to put there, if you can read between the lines, it's it's also a very depressing one. Because it talks about the word being, you know, just going to shit. And I'm a part of this word and I'm going to shit. And I don't do shit about that. It's filled up with self-loathing too. Because that, that's what it is. It's just different way to express it, you know. Just different ways. I, I, still, I still do, you know, this kind of same things with hip-hop music. But it's not, the violence is not in the music. The violence is, is in the, the way you, you rap and you do you know, the, the words and how you write them and how th there is a bit more stuff to do, you know, artistic wise. Like it has to rhyme, it has to be like that, it has to go with the rhythm, of course. But that's the exercise. I could go sometime, just launch a music and scream and then come back without having any lyrics and it's going to be fine. But the goal will always stay the same. I need to be able to express myself and I've learned with time that my museum of pain, self-loathing and shit that I put in my music can help people. And that 
man, is one of the greatest things that I've had. And I'm so thankful and so lucky that sometimes I'm receiving messages from people telling me like, your music is helping me. Like I actually today, today there's a, a friend of mine, which is a student because I'm, I'm teaching him a couple of things. And uh, he just learned that uh, his wife has a horrible disease. And he told me, your music helps me to keep my fucking head up. When someone with this kind of situation tells you that, I mean, I, w I was done. I was done. I just, I just couldn't say anything. I'm like, okay, what, 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 what the fuck am I supposed to say? Like, thank you. No, I don't want to. I, I was like, I hope that you never need to use my music for for such purposes. But I'm happy it helps. Uh, and I, I, I can't just go more than that. Like, I'm happy it helps. And if there is anything that I can do, I'll do it. And so, yeah. Bottom line, yes and no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, I think your music will help a lot of people because lyrical and musical, musical speaking, it's beautiful. And it's made out of true emotions, true feelings, true life experiences, so you can't get anything better than that. And we all thank you for that. Well, thank you in my heart. Thank you so much. Um, you're, you work with many subgenres among the projects you are in. Death metal, avant-garde metal, progressive, psychedelic, experimental, drone, ambient, black, doom, you name it. In the many variants, do you have a specific way of working for every project and subgenre or do you use the same formula for all of them? No, I think everything is different. Like you need a state of mind. Like um, if I want to do hip hop, for example, it needs, it depends what kind of hip hop. If it's old school hip hop, there's a specific BPM that I need, that I want to respect. Um, if there is modern hip hop, uh, you know, like um, Ghost Main, Bones, uh, Suicide Boys, so small ad, like whatever these guys are doing. Any kind of tempo can work. You can go faster, you can go with this trap metal thingy. So, but here, like, the music has, like, the lyrics has to be rhythm with the music itself. So there's a lot more work in the lyrics in this sense. Now, it happens many times that I just start something and I think that it's going to evolve into a black metal song. But eventually it just ends up being doom or whatever else. So I think that I just go with the flow with how I feel and I just track everything down. If I'm pleased, I'm pleased. If I'm not pleased, I'll just keep it somewhere and see whatever can happen at some point with it. Even if it's like already a pre-made black metal song that's four minutes of ideas and I'm happy, I can change it as much as I want if I want it. Um, the best example I can give you is um, the album 456 that was released in 2018. Um, there's a melody in the middle of the song, which always comes back. It's pretty much the leitmotiv of the song. Uh, the main melody and the chord progression comes from a hip hop song that I did in 2002. Well, that was like more than 15 years ago. And it's just because I never found... Uh, the right music or like I never f felt that it was okay like I tried like at least six or seven times to create something with that melody but I was never happy until four five six and then I was happy and I'm like okay that's the time to unleash this melody and then I was happy so I think there are different approaches it depends if I'm alone if I'm working with my own stuff or if I'm working with someone else like for instance I'm really happy to say that uh, my colleague Laura from Slow is coming here in a couple of days. So we're going to work on the new shit. I'm so happy because I really like to work slow with her because it's always a, a great mood together and we know what we want. We understand each other. So it's always great. Um, it's the same thing with Cult of Erinias. It's the same with some other bands that I'm involved with. But everything is different. 
And, and I think I get that because of the ways that I produce some other bands. Because producing is kind of being the extra member of the band during the actual process, you know? So, so it's always... So I have this as well when, when it's my own bands with other people. Because I, I want to make them happy, you know? Even if I'm doing vocals or something, I want to make them happy. So I'm always like proposing stuff and seeing how they react and how everything is there. And I try to go with them, how they compose. If, you know, they don't like being too stressed or whatever, I'm not going to force on an idea. I'm going to be a bit more chill because I always have like 500 ideas and I want to try the 500 ideas. It depends with whom I am. I'm going to, you know, deal the same way that I will deal with these people as if I were not in the band. And it works. It's it's very different to work with oneself than with others. That's obvious. Yeah. Well, oh, you, yeah. you you get to make some kind of well at the end one compromises, but in a good way, don't you think? Yeah, no, but that's exactly it. You know, everything is so different that when you think that you've get a compromise, which is a negative one, it's going to be automatically balanced by something else. Because if, for example, I'm stuck. And I can't find my own, like, the right vocal thing. And I'm just stuck. And it pisses me off. And my compromise is that I, no one else can do these vocals. I have to do them myself. Because I'm in the band. And I'm the goddamn vocalist. And at some point, I'm just turning away. And like, guys, I'm stuck. And someone was like, yeah, but how, how about you try this thing? And I'm like, no, it's shit. But the fact of thinking about, oh, no, it's shit. It's like, oh, I have an idea. And directly, be because of that guy, I have an idea. Which is completely out of my comfort zone. Because he could just go like, hey, you know, how about you just go and make a heavy metal screaming and you just go like scream, ah! something like that. And I'm like, no, that's a very bad idea, but I get an idea from that and I just, and you go like, anything can be a butterfly effect and I just love that so much, you know. Yeah, great, that's great. Um, we all know being a metal musician is not easy and yeah. yeah. earning a living from it is even harder did you have your family support once you decided to dedicate your life to music and do you still have it if it is a yes well my parents i'm not gonna say that they never supported me because that will be a very big lie they just don't like metal so in that case it's something that i can definitely understand and i'm Okay, with them, they're missing out a ton of things. Not my problems, their lives, not mine. Uh, but they always told me that music is almost never going to become a job. Because my dad is a painter and he had to stop because it just wasn't, you know, bringing enough money on everything. Which is a shame because he was the next fucking Salvatore Dali. But I'm biased anyway. The thing is, um, when I started like that I want to do these things. I did a couple of things which I never would have done in my whole life because I want to force myself because I know that this is the shit I want to do. So I gave myself some time and I'm still in this time, you know. I have the chance to be in a great situation right now where I'm putting as much money as I can, saving back and everything. And it's working okay. It's not the best, of course, as you can guess. You know, it's not like I'm winning thousands and thousands of euros. But humbly speaking, I'm, I think that I'm okay. And that it still it might take still more time before I can maybe launch myself fully as, you know, 100% and all of that. Uh, but I'm happy. I'm happy because I'm lucky with my situation. And I'm giving also the means. Like... Not wanting to brag or something, but last year I spent something like ten thousands of euros to upgrade my studio because I was so tired of having the same shit that I had for five years ago. When bands were coming here, I was telling them, "Yeah, sorry, my computer is a bit slow and it doesn't look professional," you know. And at some point, I wanted to tell them, like, yeah, I'm working on fucking SSDs all the goddamn way, 30 gigabytes of RAM, you know what, I, that's what I'm talking about, bitch. Like, all of that. And I, and I bought stuff. 
like and i got you know some cool friends coming here like actual sound engineer and studios coming and like oh yeah you pretty much want to try these kinds of monitors right now i've got like these beauties here they costed me a lot of money but i'm so happy with them i've got whatever headphones that i need i got the great sound card my, my pc is brand new and i bought shit ton of actual plugins and the stuff that i'm using in order to create my music and everything is 100 percent legal everything is super nice i'm really happy with everything and this is it's an accomplishment you know like being able to say like i managed to actually get all of that and, and that's that's what i want to do you know that's that's why i got this tattoo this tattoo on my hand is a job stopper you know what we call like a, a tattoo can be a job stopper like when you have a tattoo on your face and like you want to try to find a job people will be like oh no thank you we don't need a person with a fat like a face tattoo the hand tattoo to me because i'm pretty much like a of an old school family is a job stopper and i did that a couple of years ago because i told to myself your job is to be a producer nothing else you do that and you have to do that so fuck everything else do your best go nuts but make sure that this is your job i'm still there and supposedly it might just get better with time so let's just keep on <laughs> inspirational man because i think many of us lack that kind of courage to throw ourselves to the world and say okay man woman this is what i want to do and this is what i have to do to get them so the fact that you are showing us that it can be done you just have to have the balls to do it and compromise it's a great example there are a lot of sacrifices to be done you know because i realized for a lot of years that i sacrificed a lot of my social life because of learning and like doing whatever that i can i mean the shit ton of fucking music that i have in my back catalog and stuff but as well in learning you know there are times that i'm like i'm gonna dedicate my day in trying to find a perfect stone or doom guitar's tone you know and i'm gonna spend my whole fucking day trying to find that until i'm happy and it's time lost because i could go outside you know meet friends or something i mean maybe not right now because of covid but before it was the case you know i could go out meet people check something invite someone watching a movie something whatever in the end i just didn't i was concentrated on doing that so i know that that sacrifice of my social life might not have been the best choice but at the same time fuck it it's done um it's a lot of money uh let's be honest like I, I at some point like someone was asking me today like how are you able to mix or master an album or a song so fast and i'm like it's because i've got 20 years of you know job behind that and more than ten thousand of euros of gear i mean that's it, it, there's no other fucking solution i can't tell you that there's a button that you click and everything's gonna be fine otherwise i would be out of a job and but that's the thing it's i always try to see what are the compromises and if they're worth it and i realized that a bit of my sanity and my social life yeah making music and producing was way much more important and i think it still is in a way but at the same time i'm well surrounded by people who know me and accept me and i'm really happy with all that and and yeah i mean at, at the same time i think that it's it's also all about how you can have a golden parachute in case everything fucks up you know like if everything fucks up I speak French, I speak English, I might be able to find a day job, you know, whatever it is. And I'll do my best, you know. I might die mentally, but I don't care. I mean, if it's a challenge, it's a challenge, you know. I mean, I, I have to fucking do it, otherwise I'm gonna... I need to be able to tell myself that whatever bullshit comes my way, I'm able to deal with it. Because there's something that I planned. Like, my golden parachute is, you know, some money that I have back in case whatever happens, I can. Uh, finding a job somewhere, it's possible. Uh, everything that I have here, I can sell if it's possible. And I know people that would be interested. So, I have this golden parachute, even if it's an extreme thing, but it's there. 
And the fact that it's there, I'm a bit more reassured. Because in case like everything goes to shit, I have that. But a very important part. Yeah, but that also makes me wanna, you know, keep on and trying to make you know producing becoming my real job because that's what I want to do. I don't want to rely just on my golden parachute. I mean, that's like worst, 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 worst case scenario. You know, if something really bad happens, I'm gonna go with that. Otherwise, motherfucker, I'm going straight forward. That's the spirit, man. Always. Always. Um, and the next question is, well, metal is far from being a mainstream music. Mm -hmm. We all know it's not for everyone, like we just said, but we cannot deny globalization has caught up with it. Mm -hmm. to, uh, yeah, so to what extent, to what extent do you think globalization has been beneficial and to what extent damaging to the metal culture? I'm going to make a, um, like an analogy with the movie, I think you saw it, Lord of Chaos. Yeah. Um, Lord of Chaos is a fiction about something that happened, right? A lot of people, not going to name who or what, they went and believed it was true. So they went nuts about it. A lot of people took it like it was a new evangelist, so they took it like, you know, it's everything that should follow. And we saw a couple of churches getting burnt in the US. Um, I believe that there's like some, some, some kind of differences. Metal in a general genre is a good music style. And I do believe that people should listen to it because it's different, because it gives emotions that no other style can do. It's violent and powerful, and it's a definite passive catharsis for fucking everyone. The more extreme you can go, or even like symphonic metal. Like, I'm never gonna deny how much several albums from Nightwish fucking helped me when I was a child. Or Evanescence, or Rammstein, fucking Linkin Park, you know? Like, I grew up with these bands. They're metal, whatever people can say. Like, neo-metal can be sometimes way much more violent than a fucking Cannibal Corpse song. Don't take me wrong, I love Cannibal Corpse. But several songs of fucking Slipknot, way much more violent. But, but that's, that's also, also... But it's also a question of perception, you know. I, I, I can give you a DSBM album and I'm gonna tell you, that album destroyed me. And you're gonna be like, oh my god, like they are giving me like a DSB in my album, it's gonna be so fucking dope. You're gonna listen to it, you're like, eh, sounds like someone whining because it, his mother just removed the Marilyn Manson posters or something. Because that's the perception. My emotions are not yours. So metal music can really do something cool because it's power songs. You know, like people are doing sports and everything, like going to the gym, they put power songs. Metal music is fucking dope for this shit. Like, like put, you know, I don't know, like, like go with hate breed, go with like some Slayer songs, but even fucking Dragon Force and power metal stuff. I mean, it's gonna be motivating you way much more than black metal. Be <laughs> let's be honest. But for for instance, black metal, black metal is not supposed to be explained. Black metal is is completely an elitist, like elitist to the maximum, and it should stay like that. You can't explain black metal, you can't teach black metal, you just know black metal, you feel. So there is no way that, that I would say can or has black metal become a bit more popular. I have no fucking opinion about that because I know and I think you know it too. There is no need to explain. Talk about anything else. Fuck yeah, we can see more metal songs and movies, you know, these days. Because there's some people that actually appreciate this kind of music. You can see that sometimes left and right. I mean, everyone didn't know because everyone thought that was a joke, but fucking Jim Carrey likes metal. He actually enjoys fucking Cannibal Corpse. And it's not a question of he had a movie with them. He enjoyed them. And there's some other people that, I mean, I know I might get like some enemies with that. Mighty fucking Cyrus. Mighty fucking Cyrus likes metal. The, me the general mainstream metal. Am I happy that she does? Fuck yeah, because she's got a fucking tight voice when she's singing with this. 
because we all know her for the pop voice, for the mainstream shit. But when she's getting with a more gritty kind of voice and she's doing a cover of Cranberries better than fucking Dolores ever did in her whole life, come on. Open your mind. And that's the thing that I loved with metal, that people were open-minded enough to enjoy that. So I'm completely opposed to, I listen only to death metal, I listen only to black metal, everything which doesn't have a double pedal is, is stupid, whatever, or fuck this kiddie neo-metal shit. Open your mind. That's all I will ask. Music with a capital fucking M is the most important thing, and metal is in it. And the more that we go with it, the more we realize that metal music is so, so immense with the different sub-styles and everything and how a band can have an actual sound and an image and everything that goes with it. This section, Storms of the Light Bane, fucking masterpiece. Like, no one without a sense of classical music can listen to the album and tell me like, yeah, that's shit. No, no, that's a masterpiece. Not because it's metal or whatever, but because the guy has a perfect sense. Same thing with Anthems of the Welkin at Dusk of Emperor. It's cl cl classical opus magnum, you know, it's fantastic. But it's classical music oriented, because that's the way it does. And then check Southern Metal, you know, Pantera and everything, you know, that Phil Anselmo was doing. That's influenced by blues. We even have the means to put classical music and blues together, you know. So, fuck narrow-minded assholes, you know? Metal should be appreciated to its right value. And of course, we're always going to have the small kids being annoying, you know? That's always going to be the case, but it's, it's the same with everything, you know, any kind of style. So, youth has to be, you know, has to be passed at some point. We all have at some point to go and say, I like Marilyn Manson because it's edgy, you know. It, it's it's a part of, you know, evolution. So And I'm happy it's a, a part of evolution because this is how at some point you can look back at your life and your music-loving time. And, yeah, yeah, I was an asshole back then, but now I know how to appreciate that. How many, how many metalheads listen to trap music right now? Well, so many. Because they realized after at some point, like, oh, yeah, actually... It sounds good. I like it. Thank you. How, how many people listen and love Lana Del Rey? I'm one of them. Like she, Norman fucking Rockwell is one of the best albums that was released at some point. But you have to dwell in it. You have to appreciate it. It's not a question of uh, like it's awesome because it's pop music and I'm a metalhead. It's because it touches me. And I will speak about it like I speak about any kind of metal record. But if I don't like it, I just don't like it. It's not a question of I'm narrow-minded. I don't like it, but if someone likes it, it's fine. You just got to give it a chance. Absolutely, we have just to listen to it. That's the most important thing. You cannot say something doesn't like. You don't like something because you don't know it. You yeah. Yeah, you have to know it to say I don't like it. I like it. I love it. I hate it. You have to first know it. But you know that's that. Uh, that was also one of one of my problems at some point when I was younger. Because my parents didn't want to listen to stuff that I liked because they were just listening to five seconds like, oh, it's metal, I want to listen to it. And, and I'm like, how about back in the old days, no, 80s, 90s, where we had a fucking tape that we just bought, we didn't know who that band was, and we were just listening to it, we're like, oh my god, I just don't like it. It's okay, I'm just gonna re-listen to it five times until I'm 100% sure that I do not like it. That's what we, d we used to do back then. Now, you give an album to a reviewer, is listen to a couple of songs, writing his review, it's done. Next one. Come on. It isn't even listen. Man, you know, you know, one of my best days that I remember was not so long ago. Um, I was here in the studio and I was with my girlfriend and we were just listening to albums that we love. And we were into a very cosmic black metal moment. So we listen to Dark Space 3 and 4, uh, we listen to Voice Fear, uh, we listen to, I can't remember, I think Battle Dagorat, and we just put like five hours of music, and we just lay down watching the sitting for five hours. Sometimes we talked, sometimes we didn't. Man, that was one of the best moments in my whole life because I took my time to listen to music again. And it made me realize how much I was missing out 
great albums because I just was listening by doing something else while I could just stop that shit, put my ass on the couch and listen, actually listen. Because you're hearing stuff that you never heard before and it's fantastic. And I, I really wish everyone would do that. Yeah, and it sounds easy, but actually I think it's a little hard. Um, it's harder for people who is not, uh, well, used to listen to almost anything because they just use music as a background for their daily life. Exactly. That, is, that makes harder for people to actually listen to music and feel it. That's it's not for everyone. I think almost everyone can get to do it, but I think n not everyone has the the time or no, not the time, the interest in doing it. Because mm -hmm. as hard as it, as it sounds, music is not for everyone. That is actually really true. And I remember uh, because years ago, my art teacher. Uh, told me that he was trying to paint something, but he just couldn't get any um, any influence or something from music because he was like, I need to give my attention to music, but I want to be able to do something else. And I do not want to use background music as well, because it's like, I want to give my attention to music. I can't do both. So I gave him some drone ambient noise without lyrics, without anything. And I'm like, listen to that or more. Put that in the background while you're painting because this kind of music you do not need to give any attention it's going to be there it's going to influence you because that's what it is it's long pieces of music it's not a single of three minutes it's 20 50 minutes and they're going to dive in it without even thinking about it that's why i like atmospheric black metal because atmospheric black metal has the same feeling you dive in it you just float somewhere yeah and it's, you. I mean, tripping. I'm going to say tripping because I think it's the closest I could get to drugs, man. And I just love it. When I'm almost half asleep and I just put my headphones and I put whatever fucking albums, like, yeah, whatever, Dark Space, Voice Fear, something that really is going to drown me into whatever it is, even if the sound is shit, because that's black metal. Man, I'm just tripping. Like, whatever that I can just watch my fucking ceiling, I'm just tripping. And it's awesome. And I think, yeah, and I would love, you know, people, any kind of people to experience that. Like, chill, listen to ambient music. And, you know, they're like, I like listening to, you know, the rain falling down. I'm like, that's perfect. How about music? <laughs> yeah. It's it's fantastic how, how many things we had that we could do. How many choices we have and how few people are actually, you know, just going through it. It's, it's impressive. Very impressive, man. Uh, the next question is, what is next for Deha? I mean, in all, all your projects, do you, do, would you focus on something? Are you focused on something right now? And you're going to rest. I think you never rest, man, because every single, almost every single day, I receive an email telling me they have just published that. They have just launched this. Hey, have you seen this from the? It's it's amazing, man. I'm sorry, it must be annoying. <laughs> Actually, it's <clears throat> very, very, very cool. I I remember like. One of the best messages I received was last year after I, I did know this uh, was the thing. It was eight albums in one month and a half during the first confinement, March until May, something like that. And I received an email from someone that was telling me, how could you be able to do so many albums in such a, a short time? It motivates me. And that small, it motivates me just made me the, the happiest person in the whole world because that's exactly what I want. I don't want to annoy people with what I do and the huge amount of outputs. It's all about, hey, I, I do it. You can do too. And if you can't come to me, I'll help you. That's my job, like helping people with whatever that they can't do. Because if you're a guitarist, you're not a drummer. 
I can do that. You know, you're not the basis. I can do that. Like I, instead of fucking women, I spend my days trying to learn to how to make music. So I know that and I'm happy about that. So that's the only thing that I can do. So come on, bring your fucking ass in here. Let me help you. I mean, music is passion. It's about sharing. And, and I think that th that's what I want people to understand. I if I'm known uh, in, in a certain way, of course, to my scale, uh, as someone who's releasing way too much music, okay, whatever, it it's fine. Uh, I don't mind. Um, because I know that when people would just take a bit of time to listen to it, they're going to realize that the, the fucking years I spent, they're there right now. My sound is professional. I mean... I, I've always, you know, looked high for Peter Tadlern from Hypocrisy in this Abbey studio or, uh, you know, the, the Nordstrom studios in Sweden with Frederick Nordstrom, um, some other, you know, Andy Sneep, some like amazing producers that it's their job and they have big ass fucking studios and everything. I was looking up to them so much when I was younger and now I realize that I can do what they do in a specific way, my own way, you know, but I can, but I can do that stuff. And I know it might sound a bit selfish, but I'm happy to be where I am right now with all that, because I took my fucking sweet time to learn all of that. I still have so much to learn and I'm so happy, but where I am right now, I, I can be proud of myself. And this is one of the things that I want people to understand. Every single artist, beginner, professional, should be happy of what they do and should be proud, proud of, of what they do. Well, that's the thing, man. I am. And it pisses off some people. But I'm sorry. I, I am happy of what, I, what I'm doing. But otherwise, I wouldn't do it. I mean, I don't see the point in releasing something that I just wouldn't like. I, I have... I am able to take a step back and listening to my own music and say, oh, that was shit, that was shit, that was good, but that was shit. I, I'm a bit able to do that because that's how I learned my mistakes, you know. If when I look back to fucking old school Imber Lumini stuff, I'm like, holy shit, I just couldn't sing. Holy shit, that's bad, it makes all the bass, all that shit. And I'm just going nuts, but I'm like, hey, that was 15 years ago. Come on, give you some, some fucking slack. And I've learned so much, so now I know, you know. And I think we should all be happy for that. Anything that we do, anything, even if it's just us, you know, we, we shouldn't care about other people being proud of ourselves or whatever. It's all about us. It's very personal. It's very selfish, especially in art, active or passive. We should just be proud. And that, that's what drives me into creating music, to go back to your question. I, I need that. It's a vital need. I need to express myself because I have difficulties to speak and I really express myself with words. Uh, as you can see, I'm not able to be on point while answering a question. It has to be a 20 minute answer. That's, it's my problem because I always think that that detail and that detail and that detail are fucking important and sometimes they're not, but that's, that's my way of being right now. I'm trying to control it, but it's very difficult and, but doing music. It's different. I can speak in different ways. I can focus myself and my message is clear. Whether it is a four minute song or a 40 minute song, I try to really be precise and on point because, th because that's the only thing that I can do well and I'm happy. And I think you're being very straight, man. Well, I'm happy. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy you see it like that. I always sense myself as being too going places when I but that's because I'm passionate with music. Like it's a, it's a fucking obsession, man. I just uh, can't can't live without it. Not even just one day. If I don't have music always with me, I'm just sick. Like you have to understand, it's it's that bad. I have I bought a pair of headphones that is always in my bag, just in case. Always, always, always. I never use it. It's just there in case. Because otherwise, I'm going to get nuts. I have a power battery of my phone in case if I want to listen to music somewhere. Because I need battery to listen to music. I, it's, it's vital. Completely vital. I completely get you, man.
You know, so many people are always like, yeah, you know, the sound of nature, going outside, you know, being in the middle of a forest and hearing the wind in the trees and all that. I'm like, motherfucker, give me my last album of Elder Wind. That's what I'm talking about. That's fucking nature. Like Russian fucking nature, black metal. That's what I'm talking about. You know, that's the thing. I would be able to. I can if I'm with someone that we talk, no problem. If we don't talk, I'm like, sorry, I'm going to put some music. It's daily. It's always like that. Always. And I just, and I love it. <laughs> I just love it. Yeah, it's it's kind of, I, I don't know, it's, it's very natural for me too. I, I mean, I cannot live without listening to music daily. And as you say, I can stand, well, I can and sometimes stand silence, but... Man, I, I need to be listening to something. I need to to dig in something, to be uh, embraced by, by music, any kind of music. But I, I, I can stand just the noise, the noise of living. I mm. need something with, with meaning, you know? It's something that is meant to give me something, to, ah. to, to I don't know how to say it, man. I don't know, just to give me something. You know, do, do you know the classical composer, the modern classical composer, John Cage? Um, you know, the guy that made this four minutes of full silence, like it, it was super known. So that guy uh, was actually, it's thanks to a friend of mine who's making music here. Uh, I'm helping her recording her and everything. She showed me an interview of the guy when he's talking about silence. But not silence, I was perceiving, because silence doesn't exist. Like, when you go out in the streets, you're supposed to hear silence. So silence is people walking, the cars, and the noise, and whatever. And so that is silence to him. And I, I actually loved his description, because true silence doesn't exist. I mean, you could go, like, to... Uh, like, I think there's several places somewhere where you could go... Like it's so well um, acoustically treated that you could hear your own nervous system going and your heart beating up so loud that you can hear your blood pumping. That should be a really impressive thing, but no one can actually stay more than 45 minutes, I was told, because you're losing equilibrium and so many things because, yeah, I can understand that. It would be a good experience though. But like the thing is, one time, uh, just after like the, the session with this girl, I was going to South of France and uh, I was in Paris, in the subway in Paris. And I decided like my headphones, like, it's Bluetooth, so they, the battery went off. So I was finding, you know, the cable. So of course it's out. I'm hearing the, the subway noises. And I realized that the subway noises had this kind of a tempo. And I like that tempo. And it made me wanting to do something with that. And that's when I went back to that John Cage interview and I'm like, silence can help. Because if that was silence, it helped me doing music. And, and I think that this is where sometimes there is several silence that we hate. And believe me, there's so many silences that I really despise. Some of them I can enjoy. And yeah, I mean, with the curfew here, when it's, you know, past midnight, opening the window, putting my head there, hearing nothing, I like that. Not for so long, but I really like that. Because when I used to smoke, I was always, you know, smoking a cigarette like that outside. It was a nice five minutes of nothing and just enjoying. Now I'm just going there, doing the same five minutes and just watching the same views that I'm always watching. But that silence is calming me down. It's beautiful. And... The small noises, they're just like things that I never heard. So I'm happy. And I think that this can help because music is the same for us. We need music for a sp specific thing. When we are hungry, we're going to put that music. When we want to do some sport, we're going to do that. When we're depressed, we're going to do that. And when we need to use that as a weapon to um, get us back from depression, we're going to use that music. We're going to use some other things. So... We also have different choices. And I do believe that these silences can really be used. And that's why my album of same old silences, it's called like that. Because at some point you realize that these same things 
You are gonna like them. You're gonna feel comfortable with them, and they might help you. Yeah, because they are meant to do something to you. Of course, everything. Everything is is giving us something. You know, we give attention to something, and the attention comes back to us. Whether it is silence, whether it is harsh music, and that's how it works. I think. With music, it's not a one-way road. Exactly, never. And and the next question and the last one, I promise, um, it's uh, kind of the house question. I mean, this is the first episode from this segment, but I would like this question to be uh, the question to make not only to you but to other artists in the future. Yeah, yeah. So it's. It's meant to be a, a relaxing question, a funny question, if you want. All so right. it is, if you will have the chance to be a member of one of your favorite bands or project, which one would you choose and why? It doesn't matter the period. It doesn't matter if the band is still active or not. Huh, can I have multiple choices? Of course, man. You can... Uh, you can Answer what you want. I, I would, my very, very, very first choice would be David Gilmour of Pink Floyd because my favorite band. That guy is a genius and he influenced music like no one did. Uh, Freddie Mercury from Queen because that voice can never be replaced. And he was one. Why? You know the backstory of... Uh, the show must go on, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know almost everything about Queen, believe me. <laughs> yeah, here you go. So that's it. Like, not even need to speak about it. Um, I wish... Yeah, but do, do tell, maybe our audience is, isn't as savvy as us. <laughs> <laughs> but roughly speaking, uh, Freddie Mercury was sick with AIDS. And uh, it was just about to die when the song uh, The Show Must Go On had to be done. And he did it in one shot, completely sick. And you can imagine that someone who's getting AIDS has an homosexual back then, you know, with you know, all the discrimination against homosexual people back then, being so much of a great voice and having, well, so many turmoils in his life and whatever but singing this song with such intensity with a name which is the show must go on knowing he was about to die in one shot that's above art that's above performance that's that's godlike that's fucking godlike there's no other words yeah completely i'm completely okay with that choose of words godlike yeah, it's one of a kind performance. Yeah, there's can't do that two times, never. And I believe you know that there is some inspiration with black metal from these kind of stuff because black metal is also about emotion and and just going straight forward. And I, I do that. I don't like to just go five times in the vocal booth. If I have my text. I'm just going to go and I'm going to go straight. Even if the song is 60 minutes, I'm going to go one shot because fuck, I don't care. I want this to be not a performance. I want this to be how I feel right now. I want to keep it that way. And several songs were done like that. When I fuck up, I'm mad at myself, even though I know it sucks. I'm stupid to be mad at myself, but I want to be able to, you know, like uh, Crew Words, the album Crew Words. They're all fucking one shots, all of them. Every single song is one shot, and then I went back another time for ad libs. But the main thing, it's done in one shot, and that was done afterwards because it takes so much, so much energy. But that's what I want. I need these songs to to make people feel like they've just lost all of their energy. And when I'm hearing that "Show Must Go On" song, I'm getting all the energy. From someone who's about to die. How fucking amazing is that? He gave us all of his energy before he fucking died. 
I'm telling you this. Man, it's godlike. Godlike. Now, like, I could even, even go nuts and being fucking biblical on this motherfucker. Like, you know, Christ died for our sins. Freddie Mercury died to give us the fucking energy. I mean, that's far-fetched though, but it... <laughs> don't worry, I don't think there are too many religious people <laughs> watching my channel. I bet so too. <laughs> and then... I... Are, it's okay, I don't care. Uh, I respect everyone. That's, that's my goal. I, I respect everyone and everything. Like, you don't see it, but here on my wall, there's a cross. And there's an inverted cross. I welcome everything and everyone. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, man, I, I, it's all about love. I exist purely for black metal and love. And the combination, here you go. And I just love it. And to finish up your question, <laughs> I'm happy. The, to finish your question, uh, I think anything that Devin Townsend does, because to me, he's also one of those fantastic geniuses that has more than just one idea in his head. I think it doesn't have just one brain. He has to have two. He's so amazing and so nice. And seeing like also the shit that he went through and how he went back sober and kicking the shit out of life. I mean... It's not, I can't say that in the right way, but I'm proud of him, you know. And he's still there making music and making us fucking happy with stupid humor. And I love the guy. I, I wish, I wish that one day I could just tell him how much he helped me. And that's it. I, I, I would love to make music with him. But if I can just go and tell him, thank you, I would be the happiest. I mean, I said that to Gal after a, Go a Gorgoroth concert one time. I, I just went like, I just need to say thank you. Because your music helps me to be there and exist. And he was like, thank you. It means to me. And fun story. Like 10 years afterwards, I'm seeing him again with Gal's Wirt. And he remembers me. I just went there to say thank you again. And it's like, oh, you again. I'm like, you remember? He's like, yes, in Belgium, in, in Antwerp and shit. And I'm like, okay, okay fuck. I mean, do, do, that, that's the kind of moments that are priceless, you know. When you can just say to someone that you've listened to his music so much, it helps you so much, like, thank you. It's, it's amazing. And I have the same thing with some people coming and telling that to me. And I feel the proudest person in the whole world and I have a smile that goes there because when someone comes like thank you your music helped me it's like what, what do you want me to say like I thank you for making me happy right now it's, it's insane it's I wish that feeling everyone including my worst enemies I hope they feel that because it's so so amazing yeah I I agree it, it, it has to be something very special changing the lives of someone in the tiniest way you can it's it's got to be amazing butterfly effect hermano butterfly effect you know it exactly, man. so Deha, those are the questions i had for you i can't thank you enough for helping me to for answering them for answer to them sorry and for being such a nice pal man I mean, I'm, I'm happy about this interview. Like I told you, like, you've given me questions that are really pertinent to someone like me, you know. you, I'm really thankful for, for this interview for the Mexican audience. I know that several people from Mexico know my job and uh, they appreciate what I do and I'm happy. Um, I remember one of my best memories as a harsh one comes from Mexico. I never went to Mexico. But there was, back then, like more than 10 years ago, I just released the your mainly sick album of Idal. And it was uh, 2011, I think. And I'm receiving an email from someone t 
telling me like, do, 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 can I actually contact you on this email? And I'm like, yes, of course. And it's like, don't be scared. I'm, I'm going to send you a big email. I'm like, yeah, of course. And that email, including pictures, so it was him and two other friends of his, they had some kind of cave on which they put some sound system on. They draw a pentagram on the ground. They put themselves at the end of three uh, dots with a knife and a bottle of Jack. And they listen to You Mainly Sick maximum volume with just a candle. And they cut themselves, not to the point of hospitals, but they cut themselves and they did the blood ritual that I told one day in an interview, which included whiskey back then because I used to, well, I used to drink like fucking hell. And, and it, they did that, like I told people to do, this is going to relieve you. You're going to feel better. You're not going to do that to feel like shit afterwards or to take pictures because, oh, I have a black metal band. And they did that. They just sent me a picture before and after. You could see blood on the ground. You could see that the bottle was spilled completely. It was dirty as hell. And the email I got it two weeks after. And the guy, the main guy who organized the thing told me that he helped them so much that they didn't want to listen to the album ever again because it will never help them as much. It's not, never going to be enough. And they want to keep this intact. And they thanked me so much. And that's when in my head, I had two thoughts. I'm like, thank you very much. And the second one, I'm like, motherfucker, I like Mexican people. Because there is one thing that we, you know, bastard fucking Europeans, we all know about South America, that you guys are fucking nuts. And we love you for that. You know, we, we just love you so much. I remember that Dark Funeral live thing in Chile, I think, when everyone was singing like a football hymn with Dark Funeral on it. I just loved it. It's like, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Th that's what it is. Like, that's, that's what they do. And I loved it. And how many, you know, friends of mine from Mexico, they're telling me how they feel when there's a European band and an American band going to see them and how they just go nuts. And the bands that I know that went to Mexico telling me, God, you never enjoyed a metal show before you went to Mexico. These guys are nuts. And I love it because such dedication, that's black metal, man. You know it. Yeah, totally. Here, we are very passionate about music. And yeah, yeah. Metalheads, we are, we are not as many as we like, but we are very strong. I, I think we are very a very strong community. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the sense that I wanted to say. But you got the word, the sense of community. It's really impressive. I, I hope in the near future you get to come to Mexico with any of your projects i mean every one of them is fucking amazing i will love to see your life and i truly believe it will be a complete sold out anywhere you went i really hope that happened one day i i have the fear of planes so i hope that one day i will be able to just go and fight that fear because the first thing that i want to do is definitely go into the americas like the americas i mean the whole thing it's uh I want to go to Quebec. I want to go to Portland. I always wanted to go to Mexico. Uh, I want to go to Chile because I've got a couple of friends there. There are several places that I really want to visit there, even though I'm not a visiting kind of guy. But, you know, the, dif the, the difference of culture always made me like it, it's something that I always want to know a bit because I'm a very simple person. I stay at my place. I don't do shit. I don't visit much. But seeing people with different ways of living, different foods, different anything is something that I'm always interested in too, because I always thought that my word is the same everywhere, but it's so not the case. And I'm learning and I need to learn every day because I think that's, that's what I want to, if, if there is something more important than music is knowledge, I think knowledge is everything. And I want to be able to learn every day, you know, that's, and I think this is a part of it. This is a part of my own things that I want to learn. I don't want to die without knowing different cultures. 
you have you have so much culture, so much folklore, so much in everything, and I know nothing about it, and and I wish I could, you know, but I don't want to read that out of fucking Wikipedia. I want to read that with someone, something good to drink, and you explain that to me. Like, give me your fucking culture, like, drown me into your fucking cult. Show me music, show me instruments, whatever, you know, f typical clothes that you had and the stories behind. That that's the shit I want to know. Belgium, it has no fucking history. You know, we have no culture. That's why I'm almost jealous of all that. Yeah, it's... It's the same with uh, lots of countries, don't you think? Uh, made of another from the rest, from another countries. So yeah, it's it's I I will say it's just uh, their culture is just different. Their beginnings is just different. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, can't compare Mexico to Japan, for example. <laughs> yeah, so they have. Thanks a lot for your cooperation, for your time, for your, for your music, of course. It's been a true pleasure to chat with you, man. Well, muchas gracias, hermano, to you, to everyone here. I, I wish I could say some other things in Spanish, but I just know insults and I don't want to finish with an insult. Um, I, I just have like a couple of things that I want to say. Um, there is no use in Spain. If someone feels a pain, there's a meaning. If there is, if you don't find your meaning in your pain, it means that the pain doesn't exist. Remove it, feel better. Everything in life is all about getting better. You are, if you are in, in depression, if you feel sick, don't drink, don't take drugs, feel it to the maximum. Drown into it, feel like shit as much as you can. Live it to the maximum so then you can do something about it. Because you're not killing only yourself, you're killing other people around you. And that's the worst thing. Because no one is truly alone. You can be lonely, but no one is alone. And I think that right now in 2021, there are so many people that are not happy that they do not suffer so much because they don't get the attention from suffering. And I think that this is one of the biggest hypocrisy in modern life. Uh, and I'm, I fight against that. I am definitely for the people who are suffering. They know they suffer. They they should be better. They should feel better. They are never alone. We are there. We're helping them out. Also, if someone has difficulties, they need a specific music for that, call me. I'll find something. I've got fucking hundreds of music. I can give you an album. For whatever is needed music-wise, come to me. You want mixing, mastering, courses about making music, whatever, you come to me. I'm an easy person. You, you, you saw it. Like I, Whatever. You're a Mexican, whatever, musician from South America, anywhere. You need someone that can help you, come to me. And that's it. It's all about love. It's all about black metal. It's all about Satan. It's all about all of that together. And once people will understand that without nothing, then everything's going to be just fine. And for the rest... Once again, I thank you so much for your time, for listening to my music, for coming back to me and asking me to be the godfather of your new thing. I'm so happy and so thankful. Thanks for that message, man. It's, it's, it's very good. I think it will stick. I hope. I hope. So, haters, eso es todo con la entrevista aquí con Deja. Esperemos que les haya gustado. Nos estamos viendo en el siguiente video. Yeah.